Yo, what's going on, world? This is the LAW, a.k.a. Larry Potter, giving you my version of Behind the Music. Because a lot of times I get some great email questions on Twitter and Facebook asking me about the legendary artists who I've worked with. And a lot of times some of the um, the caption points can't hold all the stuff that I have to say. There's a lot of information involved. So at least we're here. You're getting the uncensored, unedited version of these legendary stories of how... I came across these people. So the number one question, how did Law get into the P-Funk camp? Well, I have to give a shout out to my boy, Gabe Gonzalez, leader of Enemy Squad, because if it wasn't for him, I would not be getting my P-Funk going the way that I am now. He was the first. Um, it started with a group that he had called Enemy Squad, and I first met Gabe when he was the drummer for 420, and 420 was opening up for Cameo, at this place called Tramps in New York City. Some of y'all funk soldiers and fans remember that place because that was a spot where all the legendary funk and R&B soul acts were going. You know, after they hated and kind of calmed down and they were just playing to the dedicated hardcore fan base that still bought their albums and anything new that they put out. So me and Gabe met that night and we hit it off completely. And that was just good because at that same time in 420 Funk Mob, I met my heroes, Michael Hampton, Billy Bass Nelson, and the late, my mentor, Gary Starchild Shider. So it was just an honor for me to even meet them. And I knew eventually, of course, I would get to the main dude, which would be George. And that, you know, of course, everybody on Facebook, Twitter, and MySpace know what George Clinton means to me. But we won't get into that. But, um, however, we just hit it all. We were talking. And it just so happens that I had my cassette demo with me. Now, you know, Gabe was a little bit more inviting than everybody else. So, of course... You know, he was talking, you know, we had a lot in common, you know, he's from the Bronx, I'm from Brooklyn, so we both had New York, but he was residing in Detroit, and Gabe has a whole history that a lot of people won't even believe, but um, anyway, he heard my demo, you know, he took it, took the demo, he heard it, and within a couple of months, they, him and Enemy Squad, which was his group, they started doing shows at Tramps and all these other different local um, club places like like um, Don Hills and, and Wetlands, and I would come out, see him and support him just to hang out. And at one of these shows, I believe the first show, they were opening up for my other idols, Mars Day and the Time. So it just so happens that Enemy Squad was opening up for them. And they snuck in one of my songs, which was I had a joint called Time to Get Stupid on my demo tape. And Gabe liked it so much that he included it in the set that they were doing. So it was one of those nights... Well, he started saying it, and the crowd was responding. So I really felt good. It used to feel good to hear the crowd respond to something I wrote. Then all of a sudden, he was like, yo, Law, you come up on the stage. I'm like, word? You know, come up on the stage. Me? I was like, okay, you know, cool, 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 whatever. So I got up on the stage, and I started getting the, the crowd involved with the chorus. And then all of a sudden, I spit the rhyme, and they was going crazy. So next thing you know, I did that, and I was content with that. You know, I got a chance to meet my heroes, and me and Mars and those guys formed a relationship after that. But me and Gabe became even tighter to the point where they did a show where I was living at, which was in Long Island. I was living out there with my grandfather at this place called The Funky Fish. And they had this one guy on stage, you know, who was very good, you know, as far as lead singer was concerned. He was okay, but he didn't know any of the other P-Funk songs. And I kind of felt that that was disrespectful. Like, how are you going to have a lead singer up here that doesn't know any of these P-Funk songs? So all of a sudden, I told Gabe... Yo, why don't you let me get in this? I mean, you're already using one of my songs. Why don't you let me get down? You know, let me prove to you that I can do this. So um, within two months of time, there I was, lead singer of Enemy Squad and touring the West Coast, which eventually led to me meeting George when they came to play with the P-Phone All-Stars in Brooklyn at Wingate Park. So I met George for the first time. We spoke very briefly because, you know, Everybody was giving George attention. I wanted to give him his space and everything like that. But I knew that the next time around, it wouldn't be like that. So it just so happens that I want to do some more studio work because, you know, at that time, Enemy Squad, after we did the tour, um, Gabe decided to put the group on hiatus. So after that, um, I started working with a few amount of people. So I hooked up with my homegirl, Sarah T, and ended up going to Atlanta and doing some recordings down there. And it just so happens that George was in Atlanta. So I'm in the studio recording. I feel his presence behind me. I'm in the studio doing just doing some stuff. Next thing you know, there's George in the doorway. And George came in. You know, I'm happy. The session, you know, I'm, I'm, my mind is like completely blown. I'm like, George is in the studio with me. So next thing you know, they did this whole thing. And he started playing, you know, this song that he was working on. And he was like, yo, Lord, 
I heard you play guitar. I'm like, how did you hear about this? And all of a sudden, he was like, put your guitar and start playing. I played that whole thing. I was soloing, playing my, playing my jump off, and I was cool with just that. That night, I went back home. The next thing you know, little did I know that Sarah T played my demo for George. That very next morning, George summoned for me to come out and live with him for a couple of months in Tallahassee, Florida. Rest in peace to GC3, George Clinton's son, who took care of me while I was down in Florida. And George Clinton gave me my first major job as a producer. And after that, it went from me working with George Clinton, the man himself, and building with him, to Chuck Haber and Michael Clip, my other mentor, approaching me about becoming the male main lead singer for 420 Funk Mile. The rest is history. It's been on ever since. P-Funk, baby.